I'm going to be playing the World Champs qualifiers uh, in Derby, and then highly unlikely, but if I do qualify, then the World Championships will be my last one. And uh, why is this the terrible decision for darts fans? Well, not if they'd seen me play for the last couple of years. I've just, I've just struggled really, and, and you know, I, I fell out of love with playing the game. I, I, I it sort of began to drain me emotionally, and um, I think I spent far too much time looking back and not enough time looking forward. And you know, things move on. I'm only forty, so I want to. You know, there's loads of things that I want to do uh, before I'm too old to do them. Really. Um, you know, I've got a few business plans in the pipeline and uh, obviously more commentary. That's my, more media stuff. That's my main, main interest now. I, you know, I really am passionate about the game. I love the game, all the characters in the game, the history of the game. So it's something I want to sort of remain involved in. And it'd be, you know, I'd be sad if I don't have sort of some part in the future of the sport. Well, you're, you're um, good at commentary. You're, just seem, you're so natural seeming. Is it something you, you feel you've improved at or do you just, is that exactly how it started? Yeah, I don't think I'm sort of anywhere near a finished article. I've got I've got no sort of broadcasting experience, and obviously my accent is a little bit of a, you know, holds me back a little bit. So I, I spent a lot of time trying to, you know, make it less coarse. I, if we were sat in a pub watching a game of darts, having a pint, and we were chatting about it, that's that's my that's my my skills. You know, I just say what I see. You know, darts fans—they're the biggest critics in the world, and if you if you're good, they're it, well. They'll let you know just as quick as if you're good or if you're bad. And, you know, I listen to what they say about other commentators and take that on board. And, you know, it's just self-talk, really. It's all down to Sky, really, if they, you know, want to give me an opportunity. I've worked for them before, and I don't quite know why I'm not being used. And, I, and they use a lot, of, um, a lot of people that have no real experience in the game, which surprises me. You know, I, I, don't, I don't get that when there's plenty of players, not just me, there's loads of players that love the opportunity to do it and are very good at it. Um, who knows? But, you know, my, my phone's always there to be answered, but they don't seem to be calling. Um, I know it's tough economically at the moment. I am outrageously expensive. Um, just to cover the cost of my wardrobe more than anything. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. I mean, ITV have, have given me loads of opportunities. I, I've been in the game over 20 years, and, and I have paid a lot of attention to how it's broadcast, which is why I am so critical of, of how the Beeb do it. Um, and... Whatever code it's played in, the players deserve respect. It's a tough, tough sport, and to be very good at it, it's very hard. And, and I don't think they get the credit, which is why I am often critical about the... the, the not necessarily the BDO, although there's plenty to be critical about, um, but generally the way their, you know, their production is, it's, it's, it's poor. You know, the lakeside venue, it's got so much history, and, and you do, you do, it's a different environment. You know, this is why... You know, at the Grand Slam, it's a little bit different for the BDO players. And that's not being critical, but it's a totally different environment. You know, look how Ted, Ted struggles with, you know, someone sneezing. I think having Ted in the tournament's great, and uh, long may it continue. Yeah, and well, long may your, your voice continue. And if anyone uh, from, listening from Sky, then uh, please give Chris Mason a job quickly. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers.